Welcome back. We're going to look at the sine, cosine, and tangent inverse trig functions, and we'll see what kinds of questions we can answer using those functions. Let's get started. Remember that our sine, cosine, and tangent trig functions take an angle input, we'll call it x or theta, and as an output, we get a ratio between two sides of the triangle. That ratio varies based on whether we're looking at the sine, cosine, or tangent function. From part one of this lesson, we saw that inverse functions swap the domain or inputs and the range or outputs. For our trig functions, that means that inverse sine, cosine, and tangent functions will take a ratio as an input and return back to us the angle measure as an output. Here's a quick example. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. In other words, the ratio between the side adjacent to a 60 degree angle and the hypotenuse of the triangle is 1 over 2. Using the inverse cosine function, we instead say that the inverse cosine of 1 half is 60 degrees. This time, we input the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, and the output will be the angle measure itself. The original sine, cosine, and tangent functions are used when you are given an angle and you want to solve for a missing side length. The inverse functions are used when you're given a side length and want to solve for a missing angle. Even though we're swapping our inputs and outputs, the ratios themselves remain the same whether we're looking at the original or the inverse of a particular function. For example, the inverse sine of b over C gives the angle opposite of side B. The inverse cosine of A over C gives the angle adjacent to side A. The inverse tangent of B over A gives the angle opposite of side B and adjacent to A. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can fill in the ratios to solve for angle alpha. How did you do? Let's try a few more examples. We have a right triangle ABC with a height of one and a hypotenuse of four. We want to solve for angles A, and B. For angle A, we can say that we have the side adjacent to that angle and the hypotenuse. So inverse cosine will work well here. To set this up, we have the inverse cosine of 1 fourth equals the measure of angle A. Using our calculator set to degrees, we'll tap in the inverse cosine of 1 over 4 and we get approximately 75.52 degrees. Go ahead and pause and set up angle B on your own. We have the side opposite B and the hypotenuse. So we'll use inverse sine this time. To set it up, we'll have inverse sine of 1 fourth equals b. Our calculator gives approximately 14.47 degrees. Keep it up, we're doing great. Let's set up an equation to find the measure of angle p. We have the opposite and adjacent sides. So we'll use inverse tangent here. Inverse tangent of 2 thirds equals p. Our calculator gives approximately 33.69. Make sure you use the fraction form 2 thirds in your calculator here. Don't type inverse tangent of 0.33 or your answer is going to be a little bit less precise. One more. We'll find the measure of angle q using tangent again. This time it will be 3 over 2 opposite over adjacent side. We set it up as inverse tangent of three over two equals Q. Same thing, use the fraction form on your calculator and we'll have approximately 56.31 degrees. 